subject linguistics course title pragmatics and discourse analysis module 15 conversation analysis 1 author Soumya Sharma presenter Rajni Sharura have you ever wondered how people talk in different languages such as Hindi Mandarin English Finnish Japanese and Tamil though the language structure is different in each case yet conversation flows effortlessly also linguists have shown that conversation proceeds through the use of distinctive prosodic grammatical and pragmatic patterns that underscore the unwritten social rules of interaction among speakers for instance all languages have the speech act equivalent of a request question and answer also speaker in different languages also pause or interrupt each other just as they talk simultaneously or correct themselves while speaking the rules for each might vary across languages yet the concepts themselves remain more or less similar for a long time sociologists philosophers and linguists have grappled with how communication happens how are meanings encoded in language and how people mediate their identities while speaking in this unit we learn about one such approach to communication known as conversation analysis conversation analysis henceforth CA is an approach in linguistics for the micro analysis of talk or conversation its main proponents are the linguists Harvey Sachs Emmanuel Shigloff and Gail Jefferson CA has its roots in the sociological approach of Harold Garfinkel and Adam Cicero called ethnomethodology influenced by Alfred Schutz phenomenology Garfinkel wished to describe how people were active agents in making sense of the world around them through everyday interaction mutual understanding between speakers that led to cooperation in communication was considered a given in research in Garfinkel's time and and this is precisely what he wished to question and examine that is how people perform everyday routine procedures such as talking Garfinkel felt that even though people take turns to talk and linguistic resources are specific to a language yet since talk proceeds smoothly the basic structure of interaction has to be universal in some way in the sense that similar notions of how talk happens that is its rules can be found in any language in addition since language structure varies the linguistic resources have to be local and language specific that help in the expression of thoughts views and feelings of individuals Garfinkel's understanding of communication was thus developed from such ideas and on the basis of his observations and study ethnomethodology developed as a field of research to examine interaction as a systematic form two methodological approaches further developed from ethno methodology namely membership categorization device analysis and CA MCD analysis can be seen in some of Shigloff's seminal articles such as the baby cried the mommy picked it up though this was an early approach in ethno methodology yet it involved a mechanistic naming of grammatical structures to understand sentences spoken in conversation therefore it soon 
declined in popularity. Conversation analysis in comparison developed as a full-fledged field because it proposed the underlying system of talk that is it sought to understand the rules that governed conversations of any kind in any setting. In fact, CA became so popular that it's now synonymous with ethnomethodology. CA theorists Sachs, Shigloff and Jefferson were interested like Garfinkel in understanding the underlying system and rules of talk found in all forms of conversation. Thus, their deliberations and research gave rise to CA. Sachs, Shigloff and Jefferson were not against grammatical analysis of language, but they were interested in a cross-cultural perspective. They wished to investigate methodological procedure and concepts that enabled conversation to happen in any language. Thus, conversation analysis shares this perspective with cross-cultural pragmatics. Grammar was analyzed if it contributed to the why and how of talk, not for its own sake. Sachs, Shigloff and Jefferson provided the various tools of CA in great detail, which we will discuss in a short while. However, before we delve into the salient concepts of CA, it is better to understand some of its theoretical assumptions that it shares with ethno methodology. These assumptions are the basis of the approach and they indicate the relationship between language, context and individuals. They are as follows. 1. Social reality is performative, that is individuals understand the social world by creating and negotiating meaning primarily through language. This means that language is actional in nature, that is people perform actions by the use of language. Indexicality is the second assumption. It means that all social phenomena are context bound and context largely determines the use of language in interaction. Thus CA takes into account the local context when analyzing talk. The local context broadly includes the speakers, the setting and the topic under discussion. The next assumption is reflexivity, which means that action and thought are reciprocally determined. Language creates context and context provides the basis for further language use. For example, if a group of friends are discussing cricket, the context allows them to discuss the matches won and lost, the cricket techniques etc. and also the lives of some famous cricket players which is a related concept. In such a case the topic shifts from the match to the players and maybe the other sports showing how language and context are informed by each other. Next demonstrability. Schifferin states that it refers to the rules and conventions used by speakers to make their actions clear. These are unwritten rules of speech exchanges that may vary from culture to culture. For example, there are unsaid rules for talking and behaving in a funeral ceremony. These assumptions make talk orderly and structural. We will not discuss the methodology used in conversation analysis. The data in CA are naturally occurring conversations, not isolated texts, that are mostly audio taped 
or videotaped and transcribed without application of statistical procedures. Statistical procedures are usually not applied in CA. The objective is to discover sequential patterns of talk that is turn taking and how meaning is produced, negotiated and mediated at every turn. The emphasis being on what is there and not on what can be or ought to be. Talk is transcribed for the minutest changes such as a pause, gap, overlapping talk or even non-verbal cues such as smiling or coughing. In spoken discourse analysis, even the pitch and speed of talk are taken into account. Analysis is thus descriptive, inductive and intensive without the investigator paying attention to every sentence and phrase. The participants immediate or manifest meanings are the focus of study, though attention is also paid to other meanings since they might contradict or neutralized former meanings. The local context is taken into account and exogenous factors such as the speaker's gender, race, role, relationship, culture, history, linguistic competence, personality, goals and intentions are discussed only if the interlocutors are oriented to them and they are part of the context. The overall aim is to understand how talk is produced negotiated and mediated in different contexts. Basically how speakers make sense of what the other person is saying so that they can reply meaningfully. Many a time analysis of large data even throws light on certain social conventions of talk in a particular culture. For example, how greetings or farewells happen in a community. We will now look at the applicability of conversation analysis. This approach can be applied on a wide variety of contexts such as political talk, drama, psychotherapy, telephone conversations, peer group talk, and courtroom proceedings. Conversation analysis has been functioning as a distinctive and established approach in discourse analysis for the last 30 years or so. It can also be combined with other approaches such as CDA because of the flexibility of its tools. Conversation analysis has been of special use to dramatists and stylisticians to provide insights about characters, themes and issues in literary texts. Let us now look at the main principles of CA that form the basis of the turn taking machinery and are extremely useful for analysis. These principles were given by Sachs, Shigloff and Jefferson in their seminal article on turn taking that they published in 1974 entitled A Simplest Systematics for the Organization of Turn Taking for Conversation. They observed the following aspects of a conversation. Speaker change occurs. Overwhelmingly one party talks at a time. Occurrences of talk by more than one speaker at a time are common but brief. Thus transitions from one turn to the next with no gap and no overlap are common in conversation. 
they also say that turn length varies and turn order is not fixed. Talk can be continuous or discontinuous. Topics of conversation are not fixed in advance. Relative distribution of turns is not specified in advance. Number of parties or you can say speakers can vary. Moreover, techniques of turn allocation are employed to maintain the smooth flow of the conversation. Repair mechanisms are used by speakers to correct themselves or the other party to avoid violations in talk. Furthermore, turn constructional units, for example, words, phrases, sentences, help to analyze the content of talk. Lastly, adjacency pairs are used and responses can be preferred, that means socially acceptable or dispreferred, that means unacceptable depending on the context. We will now discuss each of these concepts in detail. The fundamental system of any conversation is turn taking, that is turns taken by speakers to talk. In most conversations, the participants take turns to become the speaker and hearer interchangeably. Also sometimes one of the persons in a conversation can speak more than others, making him or her the dominant speaker in terms of speech quantity. The passing of one's turn to another can be signaled through non-verbal, prosodic, pragmatic and grammatical features and is known as transition relevance place. In other words, TRP is the moment where the hearer realizes that the speaker's turn is over and so gets a cue to speak. Overlaps are also common in talk. An overlap occurs when two people talk at the same time. This can be due to many people self-selecting simultaneously or when one of the speakers feels that a turn is complete when in fact it is not. They can be either competitive or collaborative. Non-competitive overlaps which occur as a part of collaborative talk include simultaneous laughter, collective greetings, farewells, etc. In contrast, competitive overlaps occur when one of the speakers tries to outdo the other speaker. Such overlaps signal dominance or control by the speaker. Most overlaps pass away quickly and some are sites of disfluency or hitches such as using a slower pace, higher pitch or prolonging sounds. Other overlaps persist for a longer time especially when each of the parties competes for the flow and when the aim is survival. Shigloff states three situations for overlap. One, A talks to B and B talks to C. Two, both A and C talk to B. Three, A and B talk to one another. Imagine that there are three persons at a party, Meeta, Praveen and Komal. Meeta speaking to Komal and I was travelling by economy class so it was quite hectic. Komal simultaneously speaking to Praveen 
the flight tickets have come down, haven't they? In such a case, there is an intentional or unintentional overlap by Mita and Komul, which is in a larger context significant for analysis. An example of the second situation is as follows. Seema, Nikhat and Manasi are good friends who are working together on an assignment. When Nikhat asks, where have you kept the notebook? Both Seema and Manasi speak simultaneously, there, pointing to the shelf. An example of the third situation can often be seen among individuals who are socially close to one another, like family members or friends. Imagine a context where two brothers, Nawaz and Abdul, have met after a long time and are very excited to talk to each other so much so that they are speaking simultaneously and then pausing, allowing the other to complete his statement. Such a kind of an overlap is known as a collaborative overlap. We will now try to understand the next concept, namely the rules for turn allocation that are unwritten rules of any conversation which the speakers must follow in order to prevent misunderstandings among themselves. These rules allow conversation to proceed smoothly without any problems and they are as follows. If the current speaker selects the next speaker, the latter is obliged to speak. If the current speaker does not select another person, then self-selection can happen. That is, a person can start speaking on his own. Whoever starts to speak first gets the flaw. If the speaker does not select another person, he or she can continue to speak. If the third rule occurs, then the first three rules reapply at the next TRP. Speakers can be selected through gaze, intonation, gestures and other non-verbal cues such as facial expressions, pointing, etc. To understand further concepts in conversation analysis, we need to know what a turn is made up of. A turn is made of a turn constructional component that is TCU, which can be anything from a word, a phrase, a clause to a sentence or more. It shows the richness of the meaning making process. We will now examine the concept of turn size. Turn size refers to the amount a speaker speaks in one turn. Turn order refers to the distribution of turns. Turn size and order can vary. For instance, if there are three speakers in a conversation, the turn order can be A, B, C, B, C. Neither is the number of speakers nor what they speak specified in advance. Turn size too differs for its length and linguistic complexity varies. The speech structure can be ABAB or it can be ABCAB. For instance, John, I need to buy a new cell phone, the old one's dead. Nigel, Oh, the latest Nokia gadget is quite cool, Alia, or the iPhone, John, hmm, but that's quite expensive, Nigel, and it doesn't have Bluetooth in the above example. John and Nigel talk more than Alia. The turn size also varies with John having longer turns while Alia's turns is the shortest. Many times speakers remain silent which becomes significant for analysis. We will now look at the concept of silence and its types. 
Silence has a significant role in speech exchange. Silence can be of three types, pause, gap and lapse. A pause occurs while one is speaking. It is intraturn. For example, one can say, I wish everything would be fine. Delayed silence at the end of a turn is a gap when the current speaker has stopped speaking and before the next speaker self-selects himself to speak. The interval between the two participants' speeches is a gap. Gap is an interturn silence, whereas a speaker stops speaking and the other person does not self-select, that is does not start to speak, then a lapse occurs for neither of them have spoken. For example, Shashwat, where did you keep the car keys? Shambhavi, lost in thought. I don't know. This is a lapse. Lapses are usually longer and generally denote the psychological state of the speaker. Apart from turn allocation techniques and mechanisms of silence, adjacency pairs, preference organization and repair mechanisms are the other important CA tools. Adjacency pairs are sequences of turns that occur together such as question answer, greeting greeting, comment comment, invitation acceptance, invitation decline, summons answers and intimacy sequences. For example, the following is a question answer sequence. What time is it? It's 5 o'clock. Another one includes greeting someone good morning or good afternoon and being greeted in turn. The structure of an adjacency pair is such that the first part of the pair puts constraints on the second part, that is it decides what occurs in the next turn. For example, a question requires an answer and a greeting a greeting. This kind of a structure aids in the interpretation of talk and the absence of any one part of an adjacency pair becomes noticeable precisely because it is expected. Some adjacency pairs are non-terminal like summons answers, obliging the summoner to speak until his summon has been answered, unlike a question where there is no obligation on the questioner to talk again and on the hearer to reply. Also, a summons answer is not an end in itself but a prelude to something in future. Amy B. Tsui suggests that a two-part adjacency pair can be expanded into a three-part exchange that is more plausible both socially and structurally as the third part is a follow-up turn. Tsui states an example where the third part can be considered a follow-up turn. A. Can you close the door please? This is the first part. B. Sure. This is the second part. A. Thanks. This is the third part. A sequence of adjacency pairs can be in more than one language, depending on whether the speakers come from a bilingual or multilingual background. In such a case, a turn constructional unit can consist of words, phrases or sentences from more than one language and the change from one language to the other can happen between turns or in a single turn, it, turn itself. Sample the following conversation between a father and a son who switch between Hindi and English. Father, beta exam kaisa hua? 
सन पापा अच्छा था बट आई थिंक आई कुड हैव डन बेटर फादर नो प्रॉब्लम बेटर नेक्स्ट एग्जाम के लिए मेहनत करो हियर द स्ट्रिक्ट अजेसेंसी पेयर इज रिस्ट्रिक्टेड टू द सन रिस्पॉन्स इन द सेकेंड टर्न बट द फादर्स फीडबैक रिस्पॉन्स इज नेसेसरी टू कंप्लीट द कन्वर्सेशन एज इट इज एक्सपेक्टेड दैट ही विल प्रोवाइड एन इवेल्युएशन ऑफ वॉट हिज सन हेज सेड दस मैनी टाइम्स द अजेसेंसी पेयर एक्सटेंड्स एज पार्ट ऑफ सोशल कन्वेंशन टू लेंड क्लैरिटी टू द ऑन गोइंग बिजनेस ऑफ टॉक वॉट सुई सजेस्ट इज सिमिलर टू सिंक्लेयर एंड कूल था आई आर एफ सीक्वेंस इनिशिएशन रिस्पॉन्स फीडबैक वेर इन वन पार्टी इनिशिएट्स द सीक्वेंस another replies to him or her and then the first party then provides feedback or assessment one such structure is the reproach account evaluation here one person blames or accuses another followed by an account or explanation by the blamed party which is then evaluated or assessed by the offended party here is an example to explain the reproach account evaluation structure alka you didn't get me the book you had promised sarita i don't have it i just have an article related to the concepts in the book alka whatever but it's not right to break a promise here alka accuses sarita of not getting the book and later defends herself but alka is still not convinced the strict single pair adjacency pairs can include intimacy sequences where both the speakers express mutual regard or affection for one another adjacency pairs also include insertion sequence where a small conversation is embedded in a large one vinayak i want to order some metal pipes sales person yes sir how many vinayak by the way how much does a metal pipe cost sales person i'll just calculate and tell you sir please wait it's uh, rupees 90 each vinayak thanks I'll order 15 metal pipes. Salesperson, okay, sir. Here the sequence where Vinayak asks about the price of each metal pipe, and the salesperson's reply is an adjacency pair embedded in the larger conversation about buying pipes. Sometimes adjacency pairs, unrelated to the topic at hand, can be embedded in larger conversations depending on what the speakers want to talk of at the moment adjacency pairs also include conversation openings and closings questions like what or who said with a rising tone are one type of opening similarly summons in a summons answer is another form of opening a conversation sacks and shigloff say that like the opening of a conversation its closing is also part of the turn taking system but it should be such that no one continues the conversation after it pre closing such as okay so well and proverbial sayings for instance things always work out for the best are different ways to initiate the end of a dialogue routine questions like well i let you get back to your books and why don't you lie down and take a nap are other possible ways of closing a conversation in hindi words like acha and chalo fir baat karte hain perform the same function sample the following conversation that includes a conversational opening closing and question answer adjacency pairs in between manya hello where were you last night 
this is opening. Dhruv, oh, I was busy completing my homework. Manya, okay, then we meet tomorrow for the film, right? Dhruv, yes, I'll buy the ticket beforehand. Take care, bye. Manya, bye, all the best. This would be closing. An interesting point to note is that an understanding of speech acts is a prerequisite for conversation analysis since the labels for most of the adjacency pairs and even for preferred or dispreferred responses are speech acts such as questioning, declaring, promising, asserting, offering, greetings, etc. An analysis under CA tools would thus make liberal use of speech acts which is dealt in the second unit of CA, that is the next unit. In the second unit, we will discuss other concepts of CA such as repair mechanisms and preference and then do an analysis of spoken discourse. Thank you.